Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Elephant Exposed. Um, today, we just want to just get right into this because this one hits home for me as being a United States Navy veteran myself. Um, this really does um, send people like myself a very big message that's coming from uh, government and more specifically from the senators that sit in the seat of power and control right now. You know, these are the, these are these very same people that uh, claim that they are the definition of being or the walking definitions, the living definitions of being what they call a true patriot of this country. And even, even being the party that they are, the Republican party, the very definition of the Republican party or what the, the meaning of them, they are supposed to be for the people. Well, for the people, Thank you for absolutely nothing. Because yet again, just for the sake of sitting in your seats, of doing nothing and getting paid for the rest of your life in doing nothing. Why? Because our problems don't affect you. I don't care what branch you served in. Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine, Coast Guard, Reserve, doesn't matter. We deserve every last benefit that we fought for. And it does not matter. Oh, and let me, I'm going to address this. I'm going to expose this elephant. Just because you hear someone say veteran, it does not mean that all veterans uh, were active behind enemy lines. And it does not mean that their job was any less value. Because if it's one thing that I learned in the military a long time ago, is that, yes, we do have specific uh, soldiers and sailors and airmen that go behind enemy line, but they have to be supported. And in that support, it comes in many forms. It comes in physically, and it, and it goes into what we call logistics. Logistics. That means someone has to make sure that paperwork is done. And it is just as important as someone actually fighting the actual fight, guerrilla warfare style, close combat or whatever. And even amongst the branches, there seems to be like this uh, <clears throat> thing of uh, pride. Well, I fought. No, we all fought. And I didn't really realize until you start climbing up in rank just what my senior seniors was educating me on. But let me get back to my point in which I'm pretty sure if you've been watching uh, what's been going on in the news, that you know that um, just about all the Republicans have shot down yet another, I'm just going to say it in my terms, another benefits package that would have helped out right here at home, our very own people. And yes, I am one of those people that that would have, that would have uh, benefited from it because I am a veteran. I'm a combat veteran, but that's beside the point. Uh, the purpose of my show is to expose 
the elephant in the room. So here is the elephant. The elephant in this room on this evening is called this so-called patriotism that the Republicans have because it's just a show. It's just something to say. You are only patriots by name and proclamation. So what do you mean, CJ? Because these are the very same people that you will see that'll get out um, in public um, the first thing that comes to my mind is big trucks, okay? So you got, you know, these big trucks, these four by fours, you got the American flag plastered everywhere. And then you got a contradicting flag flying right along beside it because most of you uh, like to still fly the Confederate, uh, the Confederate rebel flag and hiding behind the whole thing of, of um, Southern pride. But there's no need to go down that rabbit hole because we all know history and everything else. And it's just racism low key. And you're just trying to live out loud with it. We, we understand that. So it's, 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 it's no need to do that. So you, you, you're symbolizing freedom on one side of your vehicle. And then on the other side, you're, you're expressing about how you feel about everybody else. Okay, so with that being said, and then the first thing you go hollering is, you know, freedom, freedom, freedom. And then, you know, whenever the microphone is pushed in one of those sinners' faces and stuff, they was like, yes, we'll, you know, we're here to, you know, represent, you know, our um, our constituents and blah, 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 this and this. And you want to talk about the protection of women and children and the in safeguarding democracy and blah 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 and yes we stand for um the, the the support of law and order now let's go ahead and let's let's go back to the freedom portion okay so when when we're talking about freedom the first things that you should be thinking about is the different freedoms that the constitution gives you okay and so the first thing you should be thinking about is the freedom of speech, the freedom of religion, the freedom of expression, the freedom of press. Now, just like everything else, we don't have a problem with expressing ourselves and in our religion and in our speeches and even in the press, as long as it's, it's in line with what you as an individual believe, then that's not true freedom, not American freedom. Okay. So I'll give you an example about what I mean. People love to go back and refer to Colin Kaepernick and him kneeling versus standing. Really, guys? Really? Well, that was the wrong type of platform bullcrap that was the perfect platform because in his kneeling he was standing up for injustice being exposed well there's a place in town for all of that yeah because it was inconveniencing you it was making you feel uncomfortable and that is the whole point point. and besides uh, for those who would bother to research what kneeling is and how it came to be, it's actually one of the most humblest way you can even approach or show honor and respect, whether it's on one knee or two. So you want to split hairs. Because the way that my dad used to tell me, it's the empty cans that makes the loudest noises. So for these so-called um, 
people that wanted to make Collins kneeling versus him standing. You were just making noise. You were just jumping on a bandwagon because it sounded good. And because somebody was trying to get into a position of power and authority in an official capacity. And they felt like, hey, that's something good that I can run on. And it seems like that Americans that look like me, Americans that talk like me, Americans that move and think like me, they're on board with it. So I'm going ride, to ride this wave. And let me also touch on one thing about religion here in America. <clears throat> yes, for the most part, this country was founded by, or I would say colonized, colonized by Protestant believers, aka Christians. But Here's the other thing about freedom. We have the freedom to practice religion, period. But it does not mean Christian only. That's right. I said it. As a Christian believer, my common sense tells me that if anybody and everybody that is in America are not going to always agree. Even amongst Christians themselves, they don't practice their religion, their belief all the same way. So what makes you think that we are all should fall under this Christian type of uh, uh, practice? We have people of all other kinds of cultures that believe in spiritual things and all else in between that's the great part about being an american an american is supposed to be the culmination of a smorgasbord of people a smorgasbord of cultures and respecting one another's belief systems and so forth but yet and still you kind of still low key trying to press your the 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 Christian way of doing things. Not everybody is going to take hold to that. Then you are not really allowing that person freedom to their religion be practiced. Let alone talk about things like the overturning of Roe versus Wade. I don't even have to say it because you know it. We just went totally and completely backwards with that. Who are we as men? And more specifically, who are you as overprivileged, old, white American males who are you to tell any woman of any race, creed, or color, or age what to do with her body? Who are you? If you are a Christian believer, I will say this. You don't have a heaven or hell to put that woman in. It is definitely not your body. You have no right. Whether you want to try to make a law to hide behind it, because it's just all about controlling someone other than yourself. That's what Roe versus Wade means to a man, to a white man and a white male that with colonial thinking. When I think about 
when a person is trying to take over the right to control someone's body. The first thing that comes to my mind as a in as a person that was in law enforcement, um, that would be a kidnapping. Because that person would feel like, oh, I don't have the right to just up and just do anything at all. And I'm under this person's control. Or this by force or intimidation or coercion. It doesn't matter. Now that person feels kidnapped. Same thing if it was uh, a person of law enforcement taking away the freedom of somebody. That's called an arrest. Again, the taking away of someone's freedom. So in a sense, proverbially, you have taken, you have arrested these women from practicing the freedom that they should have over their own bodies. And you so-called patriots of the United States love to say things like, we are safeguarding democracy, but yet and still on January 6th, you out there still sending conflicting messages. Stopping what, Steele? There was nothing stolen. But it's sad to see thousands of people be brainwashed, bamboozled, beguiled into thinking something like that. So then you go out there again with your American flags, your Confederate flags, waving and screaming freedom and kill certain dignitaries of our government. You brought a freaking noose to the Capitol. And then the very people that you were screaming about back the boot, back the blue, you're hurting them. For those of for those for those ones that was actually there to just simply do their job, and that was to ensure the safeguarding of all the dignitaries that was in the Capitol. Just walking contradictions. And just doing what your master tells you to. For what? Money? Position? Power? You have no morals. You have no ethics. You have nothing. Except for just this insatiable passion for just pure greed. Then you turn around and say, oh, we have nothing but love for our veterans. Okay, sure. When most of you Republican senators shot down the very bill that would have taken care of us just a little better. And in lies another contradiction. Now you're quick to shoot down something that would actually benefit American soldiers, men and women, sailors and, and airmen. But you want for us to have a bleeding heart and send 
millions of dollars, if not billions of dollars over to the suffering people in Ukraine. And I don't want to make it sound like I have no empathy for Ukraine, but I'm very old school in the sense of I can't help you until I've taken care of me. It's the basic rules in even just being a passenger on an airplane. You got to be able to put your oxygen mask on first. Then you, you are in a position to help out someone else. It's not that I don't want to or I don't have enough sympathy or empathy for other suffering countries and other people out there and everything. But when I hear these Billy Graham commercials and so forth and, you know, God is real. Yes, he is. And out of all these so-called Christians, people right here in America. We aren't important enough, meaning the veterans of these United States. We're not important enough to be taken care of, but we can send millions, if not trillions of dollars right outside of the United States to take care of other countries. You stand in support of law and order just as long as that law and order does not affect you. Because we all know why laws were originally made. And if you don't know, do your research. These laws were starting to be made whenever the white colonial men was starting to realize that they need to protect their white wives and children. And along comes with that comes the protection of the rich. And when you are rich, you are privileged. And when you are privileged and rich, then you are powerful. And that's why it is so hard to get any of these people out of their positions they will do anything and everything to stay in their positions. And that is the reason why Elephant Exposed was even created. So what is the purpose of Elephant Exposed? What is our primary goal? Our primary goal is to expose the unfair, the injustices, the underreported, and the non reported cases that happens every single day here in these United States and to expose all the ugly. America tries to hide, cover, spin, gaslight to the public into thinking that something egregious didn't happen. We want to shed a light on what happens in the dark. We, we uh, seek out true accountability. True accountability for those, for those wrongdoers and real punishment for those violators not having the ability not to ever go back to the same positions of public trust and power ever again. That is the purpose of Elephant Exposed. And with your help, we will continue to do so. So now with all of that being said, I've had my spill, I've had my say. Right now, I want to thank everybody for watching. Thank you again for your time. 
Thank you again for liking and subscribing. And please don't forget to hit that little red bell so you'll know every time something new comes up. Until next week, y'all take care.